Hello! This video is a continuation on our series of representing numbers. This is going to be on signed numbers. We just finished up talking about unsigned numbers and binary coded decimal numbers, which you can see here. Starting off our topic today is an important note that we usually work with signed numbers. Almost always our numbers are going to have positive and negative values, and even if they don't, computers often use negative numbers to perform subtraction, even if you were subtracting two positive numbers. For example, if you had a positive 8 and a positive 4 and you want to subtract them to get 4, one way to do that is to simply change the sign of the 4 to a negative 4 and then you would end up with the same answer. This is easier for our adder because it doesn't have to have any different circuitry to deal with subtraction than it does for addition. So it's desirable to have sign numbers but so far the only way we've seen to do that is binary coded decimal using a packed decimal format and because of the range issues and other circuitry that's required to do the re-encoding of the binary coded decimal, it's not exactly an ideal solution. It does still have its use for maintaining that precision, but for most things that precision is an okay or worthwhile loss if we can speed things up. So how can we fix this and how do computers actually do most of their arithmetic today? Well, we're going to look at a few ways. We're going to start with sign and magnitude and we're going to look then at two versions of complementary notation, ones and twos complement. Now the answer to my question is that most computers use twos complement today, although there are variations. To fully understand twos complement, we're first going to work and explain sign and magnitude and ones one's complement along the way. Sign and magnitude is basically just a way to distinguish positive and negative numbers within a regular base 2 binary system. We're just simply going to use one of the bits that we ordinarily use to increase the magnitude of the value that we could represent to represent the sign instead. So one of the bits will be a 0 to denote a positive value or a 1 to denote a negative value. The sign can be at the beginning or the end of the number, however we're going to to always put it at the beginning of the number. The different architectures do deal with this in different ways, so it's specific to the architecture of the computer, but to keep things clear here, we're always going to use the first bit or the high order bit to denote the sign. Now, this obviously has an effect on the range. Just like we talked about with binary coded decimal losing range because you encoded a decimal number with a range of 0 through 9 into a uh, essentially a hexadecimal number because you're using four binary digits uh, with a range of 0 through 15, you lost those extra five digits. Here, we're losing range in positive space because we're giving up some of that range to negative space. Even though the range of the number stays close to the same, and the reason it's close to we'll get to in a moment, it has to do with having a second zero, but even though the range is close to the same, we've pivoted where the range is. So instead of the range being, say, from zero to 255, we've shifted it and put the zero in the middle and said it's now zero to 127 and zero to negative. 127. Let's see what representing numbers might look like here. So for now we're going to stick to 8 bits. Notice it's important to mention how many bits you're using when you're talking about a signed binary number. If you have 8 bits or 16 bits, if you want to represent the number negative 255, for example, you would do that two different ways, and I'll show that in a moment. But right now, let's just look at an 8-bit number. If we had 1111111 and it was unsigned, that would be the number 255. It's the maximum value we can express with that number of bits. However, for a signed number, the maximum values we can express are either 0, 1, 111111, which is our positive number 127, or 1111111, which is our negative value 127. Now note, there are two different values for zero here. This is something that can cause bugs and odd behavior in software. Our positive zero is straightforward, all zeros. But our negative zero is a negative in the front and still zeros after it. Let's take a look to see how this shift in range affects a number between unsigned and signed binary. If we had 10101010 in unsigned binary, this is the number 170 in decimal. However, that same exact 
bit string in signed binary is negative 42 because we're taking the one at the beginning, denoting it as the sign for the number 101010, which is a 42. So sign in magnitude or sign binary is a simple solution to a problem that we need to solve, which is how to represent negative numbers in a binary space. On the surface, it appears to be pretty efficient because our range has effectively remained the same. We've just shifted it so we can represent less positive values and more negative values so that it's a split. We represent half negative and half positive instead of twice as many positive and no negative. However, it does have some shortcomings. So for example, an adder has to have an additional step to set the sign because it cannot know in advance what the sign will be. I'll show this in a moment, but for us, it's a little bit intuitive. We can look at the magnitude of two different numbers in an arithmetic problem and know which one should be the positive and negative one because we can see the magnitude of them. But remember, the computer's view of the world is very finite and discrete to the moment in time in which it has information. If we want to be able to, to store information, like how, which is the bigger number and which sign will we use at the end, we need a way to do that. So that means that there are additional circuitry has to be added and it usually would incur additional steps taking additional time for the equation to be performed. Let's look a little bit more in depth at what we're talking about when it comes to assigning the sign of the result. When we take two values like we have here of 4 plus 2, in addition this is very straightforward. If there's no negatives involved 4 plus 2 equals 6. However, if we have a signed number and we say that we're going to say subtract 2 from 4, we can see right away that if we have a larger number 4 and a smaller number 2, then our answer will be positive 2. However, if we were subtracting or had a larger negative number like 4, then our value would be a negative number for the same magnitude. For a computer, this is very hard to understand. It would have to keep track of which order the values went in and how big those values were to know which value was larger than the other and which sign to apply. For this reason, sign and magnitude or sign binary is not widely used as the standard solution for how to store sign numbers. It's simply too hard to perform arithmetic with and too hard to know exactly what sign to apply to the result. There is a better solution known as complementary representation, and that is what we're going to be exploring in our next video.